if your first reaction when you first started to explore using Obsidian for note-taking was, but I can't code, then this video is for you. I do think you can use Obsidian without doing any coding whatsoever, but I think that decreases its usefulness. So instead of trying to teach you how to use Obsidian with just the vanilla stuff without any coding, I'm instead going to show you the very basics of the syntax you'll need for formatting your notes and for querying them in Obsidian. Obsidian uses a format called Markdown for note-taking. Markdown is not exactly a programming language. It's more like a markup language where there are some symbols that mean certain things and have to be put in a certain order. For example, this hash symbol followed by a space is going to create the first type of heading. So this is the biggest heading. And you'll see that this is larger than the other note. So for example, if I were just to type something else, that's what the normal text looks like. And if I do two hashes and then a space, then this is the second biggest heading or heading two. And you can keep going like that and they might be different colors, like apparently this is yellow, and this is green, but the color of these headings are going to be controlled by your theme. Right now I'm using a theme called Everforest. If yours doesn't look like this and doesn't have different colors, then try another theme or maybe try Everforest. In Obsidian, when you want to link to another node also within Obsidian, then you start with these two square brackets and then you can start typing. So for example, if I want to link to this Grimoire of the Grave Kickstarter, you just type the file name and then you select it using the arrow keys and that is already a link. Now, if you want to, you can hold command or control if you're on Windows and then hover over it and you'll see that page. Or if you want to actually click on it, then it opens up that page in another tab. Before we go further, you might have noticed that while I was typing those hashes for the headings, you could see them, but then when I went down or up and escaped that line, then they disappeared. That's because in Obsidian, there are actually three types of views or modes. There's the reading view, there's source mode, and then there's live preview. By default, Obsidian should be showing it to you in live preview. That means that when you go onto that line, you'll see all of those marks, the syntax that I was talking about for headings or for anything else. But if you go down or up and escape that line, then you won't see it at all. So it's kind of rendering it for you. But if you want to see it again, then you can just go to that line again. If you'd like to change to source mode, then you can right click here and then click source mode. And then you'll always see all of these hashes or these brackets. Let's see what this looks like in reading view. So to right click on that and then click reading view and you'll see that they disappear. Not only that though, but you also can't actually type anything. That's because this is like just for reading. You're not supposed to be creating your notes in this view. So you can right click on that, unclick reading view, and you're back to source mode. So we'll also then unclick source mode and the default is live preview. If that's a little confusing, I think you should just use live preview. I think it's good for most cases. So we've already done one link here to an obsidian note, but that's always going to show grimoire of the grave. So what if we want to change how that looks, but not the note that it's pointing to? So maybe we want to use it in a sentence like we found and then instead of grimoire of the grave, I'm going to type this pipe character and then I'll say this artifact. And then now when I'm out of that, it just says this artifact. But if I click on it, it's still actually going to Grimoire of the Grave. So it's going to the same file, but now I've just kind of changed what text appears here in this link. And the way that I did that was using this pipe character and then the link text that I wanted. Now, if I want to link to say a public website, so outside of my Obsidian notes, then what I would do is I type an open bracket here and I'd say, say my name, close that, and then create parentheses. And inside that, that's where you type the address. So in this case, I'm typing the URL for my site. 
when I enter that, now it just says Nicole and it has this like little box with an arrow on it to show that it's going to an external website. And when I click on that, then I go to the actual site. Now, what if I just want to link to a particular section in a note? I'm going to create a new note here and I'm going to put it side by side just so you can see what's happening. And in this new page, I'm going to try to get everything under this purple section. So I'm going to start off as if I'm just linking to my new note and that's what it was. And then at the end here, I'm going to hit the hash symbol and I'm going to look for purple. Now, when I click on this, it's going to take me just to that purple section. This is handy for jumping quickly to a specific part of your notes. If I want something within that section, so not the entire one, but maybe just this sentence, then what I would do is I would type my new note and instead of the hash, I'm going to type the caret, which is the upward arrow. And then I'm going to start typing that something in that sentence. So here we found this artifact. I'm going to hit enter and you'll see that Obsidian did two things. One is that it added these characters at the end of this sentence. Now, if I switch to preview mode, the shortcut for that is command E, then it doesn't actually show up, which is a good thing. So it's only something that Obsidian uses to identify that passage or that paragraph. So if I switch back to live preview, we'll also see that the characters that were put into this note are the same as the one here at the end of the link. This is so that when I hover over it and hold down the command key, I'll see that it's just linking to that sentence, nothing else. And if I click on it, then it also highlights that for me. So now we've talked about how to link to a new note, a public site, a part of a note, meaning a section or a paragraph within that note. But what if you don't want to just link to it? What if you also want to embed that part of the note? To do that, we can just add an exclamation point. So here where we had a link to the note, if I add an exclamation point, you'll see that it changes. Now it's putting everything that's in this note in the new note. So let's remove that because we want to see the other ones. Now, this one was the one where I linked to a section in the note. If I add an exclamation point to that, this entire purple section is being shown with all of the paragraphs underneath it. And if I remove that and go to this one, this one was the one where we had a specific paragraph within a section of that note. And if I add an exclamation point to that, then it'll also just embed that part. Now these embeds will not be editable, but you can click here to open the link and then go straight to that section. You can also format your text differently. So for example, if I hit command B, you'll see that there are four asterisks that have been added. So I can say this is bold text and the word this now, which is surrounded by the asterisks is in bold. I can also type this manually. So just type out the two asterisks, two asterisks, and then another one after that, and we'll make words bold. Now, if I want that to be italic instead, command I or control I is going to work. And that's just a single asterisk. This is italic text. And I can also just type that with a single asterisk. One asterisk will make wor words <laughs> italic. You can also have strike through text, which is text where there's a line in the middle of it, like it's been crossed out. Have a look at your keyboard. For me, it's shift and then the squiggly key and I have to do it twice. And I'll say this is strike through text and then I'll do it again twice. Now, if I enter that, you'll see that the squigglies disappear, but now it's just that text that's been crossed out. And then if you want to highlight something, you can do that too. That's just two equal signs highlight this text and then end it with two more equal signs. So what if you want to quote something that somebody said? Well, you can do that with the right arrow. So if you type this and then you can type whatever you want to say. So for example, live long and prosper. 
And when you enter, you'll see that it's kind of indented and it's shown to be a quote. This is called a block quote. And you can also have multi-line block quotes by just entering there. So for example, this was a Vulcan saying. So then it just is visually distinguished from the rest of your notes. What if you want an image in your notes? Well, go ahead and find it in your file explorer or finder. And the easiest way is to drag and drop it here. The image will show up here. And if you want to see what that text looks like, you can go down until you're on that same line where the image was. And you'll see that the syntax looks like you're embedding a note, except it's the actual file name. What has happened here is when I dragged that photo from my downloads folder to my vault, Obsidian actually copied that image to my Obsidian vault. You don't really have to worry about that unless you want to rearrange things. Brilliant is the sponsor of this video, but only because I love using it myself and because I love what they stand for. Brilliant's founder and CEO, Sue Kim, is an Asian American immigrant, and she created Brilliant to make learning more accessible. Brilliant is an online learning platform specifically geared towards the maths and sciences, including computer science, but their lessons are more like bite-sized games so that you can learn a little bit every day and still have it be fun. It's focused on learning by doing, so even from the first Python course, for example, the first bit of code that you touch is already focused on building visual shapes for you to create and experiment with. Or in the mathematics fundamentals course, I was shocked to find out that even though I still memorized the Pythagorean theorem by heart from my school days, I didn't really intuitively understand it until Brilliant proved why it was true visually. They're adding heaps of lessons all the time. I just found out that one of my favorite YouTube channels, Kurzgesagt, actually has a collaboration with Brilliant and they have courses on Brilliant where each one is based on the topics of the Kurzgesagt videos. So I can't help but feel like someone at Brilliant is watching me and creating content for my specific interests. If you're the kind of person who's watching this video, then you might also be a lifelong learner. And in that case, you should use this link. And if you're one of the first 200 people to sign up to it, then you will get a 20% off on an annual premium subscription with Brilliant. Thanks, Brilliant. So what if you have a really long note and you just want some separation between sections? You could go here and type three dashes. And then when you enter, that becomes like a horizontal rule. Then let's go to listing items. So you can do that by typing this hyphen and then space. And you'll see that that was already treated as a bullet. So you can type item one. Now to create another one, you can type item two. But if you want to make a bullet that's nested under a bullet, then you can hit enter and then tab. So you can say item 2.1, for instance. If you want this list numbered instead, then you just type out the number, a period, and then a space. And you say, this is the first item. And then you can enter to have a second item. And it'll automatically increment the numbers as you go. Now to create a checklist, you can add a hyphen, a space, and then open brackets. And you'll see that the closing bracket was already created, but make sure you add a space and then go to the right of that bracket and then add another space. And then you can start typing. So this is a to do. There is an easier way though. If you just hit command enter, or I think that's control enter that automatically creates a checklist for you. If that's not working for you, go ahead to settings and go to hotkeys and then type in toggle and checkbox status and see whether this one has something set in it. So if not, you can add this plus sign and type in your own keyboard shortcut for it. I use command enter, but you can use whatever you want. Then when you wanna check something off, you can go here with your mouse and click and that automatically gets checked off. You could also hit command enter again. This is what it means by toggle. So if you hit command enter, it unchecks it. And if you hit command enter again after that, then it checks it. Or if you want to create it manually, you can add the hyphen space and then within the close brackets, just add an X and it will already be completed for you. 
Remember how we said that in live preview, all of these marks and the specific syntax that you're using in Markdown disappear because it's being rendered automatically? Well, if you want to type in code that you don't want that to happen to, you can use inline code. To do that, type in a backtick, which will be automatically paired, meaning it will create two instead of one. And then you can type in whatever you want. So for example, I can type in the two brackets and do my new note. And even when I enter, you'll see that it's still showing up with the two brackets here. So here's the difference if I hadn't used the code block with it. You see, this one is already a link, but this one is showing exactly how I typed it in. Now that can be handy if you want to say like, oh, this is a specific command for Obsidian, for instance, then it's nice to be able to see what you actually typed without changing how the rest of the page looks. If you want to put in more, then you can do three back ticks and then there'll automatically be another pair that closes it and then hit enter. And then between them, you can type in something that you want. If you're typing in a specific programming language, you can also put JavaScript there or whatever it is like Python. And you can say, for example, print hello world. And this is great for if you want to type out more than one line. See, now it's four different lines that are all going to appear in this format. Now for callouts, I have a whole video talking about how these callouts work. The easiest way to use callouts are the command palette. So go to settings here to core plugins and make sure this command palette is enabled and exit out of that. And now you can type control or command P and this is a list of commands. So just start typing callout and you want insert callout. So hit enter on that one. And it's already created a callout in the right syntax for you. So we can just put something like question here and then you can replace the title and the contents. The cool thing about callouts is how different it looks from the rest of the notes. So if I exit out of this by just going down one arrow, you'll see that it has this cool green background and you can change that as well. So if this weren't a question and maybe it's a warning, then you'll see it appears as orange. So you can play around with that. You can also add a minus sign, for example, just after the closing bracket and that'll show up automatically collapsed. That's cool for things that you don't always want to be shown right away. And then you can just click on it and it shows that question. By the way, the answer to the question, how do you change font color in Obsidian is you can't really accept if you have a theme that allows it. So you do have to hunt around for the right theme, or if you're more familiar with CSS, then you can dive right into the CSS, but that's maybe a video for another day. The last thing about Markdown format that I want to show is how to do footnotes. So let's say that instead of saying this, that this was a Vulcan saying, I want to have a clickable little footnote here that takes me to the bottom of the page. So let me just show you what that looks like. So I'm going to type a space here right after this line and opening bracket and then a carrot. That's the arrow sign up. And then I'll type whatever I want to hear. I could also just put one or something, but I'm going to type Vulcan because that means something to me. Then after that, I've copied this part and I'm going to go to the bottom and I'm going to type that and then colon, and then I can type whatever I want. So maybe I'll say Spock 19. I'm not sure when, it, when he said it, but a Vulcan saying whatever that is and and when I flip to the reading view, so I can do that again by right clicking here and then going to reading view, or I can just do command E. And if I scroll up here, that Vulcan text has been replaced with a one. Now, if I click it, it goes right to that part where I typed in that this was a Vulcan saying. And if I click on this arrow, it takes me back to that. So this is a good way to cite your references. So I just showed you all of the basics of formatting your notes in Markdown syntax within Obsidian. If you are a member of my Patreon, you can download this quick cheat sheet, kind of like a quick reference for everything that we just discussed here. Or you can also check out the Obsidian documentation. I'm going to leave a link down below so that you can have a look at that as well.
Another thing you might want to do in Obsidian is search. Let's go back to the computer. To use search in Obsidian, first go to settings and core plugins. If this isn't already enabled, go ahead and enable that. Now exit out of that, and then we're going to expand it here. And this is the search box. Now there's a whole bunch of things that you can do here, but let me go through some of the basics. First, you can just start typing. For example, let's do tabletop games, and that's going to find all of the text that has tabletop and games. But you'll see that it doesn't necessarily have to be in the same line or within the same phrase. If you type it like this, it's just going to show you all of the nodes that have the word tabletop and the word games. Now, if I did or here, that'll show me all of the nodes that have one or the other. Or if I want this whole phrase, like tabletop games, as a keyword, then I can enclose it in double quotes. And now instead of just returning things that have tabletop and things that have games, it'll just return nodes that have the phrase tabletop games. And what if I only want tabletop, but I don't want the ones that have games in it? Well, I can add this minus sign in front of games, and that'll show me notes where I only said tabletop. So this one doesn't have the word games. So everything here won't have the word games in it. Now, if I only want to search within a folder, then I can add path and then type the folder. So here I'm saying I only want notes that have the word tabletop or the word games within the TTRPGs folder. So here's one with just games and here's one with just tabletop. If I want to exclude a path, I can go right in front of the path here and type a minus sign. And that'll show things that are not in TTRPGs. I can also add tags. So I could say tag and then type in the tag. So for example, I use a TVZ tag. Now this is looking for things, notes with tabletop or games that are not in the TTRPGs folder that also have a TVZ tag, which I use for like some stuff that I need to process. So right now I only have one note here that's coming up. It has both tabletop and games. And that's showing everything that does not have the tag TVZ. One thing that people might not know is that you can also embed these search results within a note. So I'm going to copy all of this and go back to the note that we had here. And I'm going to type another one for embedding searches. Now we can do what we learned before with the code block. So three back ticks. But this time I'm going to type query and you don't, this is not any plugin. This should work with vanilla obsidian and then enter here. And I'm going to paste that exact query that we used. We already know that this should have one result. So I'll just go up here and it embeds this entire search pane and the results. And you can also like click on it. And then you can also use any of these actions here, like changing the sort order or hiding the title. This is a great way of saving searches that you do over and over again. And it's kind of nice to have it within a note. I often get the feedback that Obsidian is for developers, but I think that is a limiting belief. After all, you don't need to be a professional singer to sing or even to sing well, and you don't need to be a programmer to be able to code a little bit here and there. A lot of it is copying and pasting or searching for what you want. And knowing some of the coding tips in this video are going to help you mold Obsidian into exactly what you need. Now, I did mention callouts earlier, but I didn't go too much into them. If you want to know exactly how to use that syntax and how to use all the cool options for it, check out this video with some use cases for it. Thank you for watching. Kapla.